Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Thriving Doctors podcast. Uh, to me, to, to me. Uh, today, it's me again. Hope you're enjoying these single handers uh, as I look to really pick out stuff that's happening for learnings that I'm happening. Uh, sorry, learnings that are happening for for me at the moment and stuff that is coming up in my conversations is coming up on social media and I'm reflecting on this and I'm I'm, I'm looking for a, for some new insights myself on this so that I can uh, see this stuff more clearly for myself and also help uh, others see it more 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 clearly for them so that's why they these podcasts uh, are a little bit shorter because it, it's it's new stuff it's not it, it's not simon's back catalog it's his uh his his new releases right so uh sometimes you go to a concert and all you want to hear is the back catalog your favorite song so i'm thinking about the killers and um uh, mr brightside and uh sam's town and all these songs uh and that's what you want you want you want the greatest hits, but what what the artists want to do is want to introduce you to their new stuff and um, the way that the stuff that they the songs that they have just created uh, and 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 share those with you. So that's what I'm trying to do here. The other day, a fellow adoptee was talking about our need for connection, and I thought how. And, and that, that that drives everything. And I was thinking about connection. I think, yeah, that's so, so profound, isn't it? How um, we, it, it, the, there's been that loss of connection with our birth mother. Um, of course, all the physical, the physical connection is cut. It is when the umbilical cord is, is cut. And and then um, some of the some of you adoptees I know your mother, your birth mother never saw you. You were whisked away, um, and taken to another taken to another room. And there was this idea that if the birth mother didn't see the child, then uh, the 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 pain would be less for her somehow, or that would and and maybe that would make it harder for the institution right so are they are, are they looking after their own interests are they looking after are they just looking are they looking after the parents uh, interests are, are they looking after both but yeah the, there's uh, the the physical cutting of the umbilical cord is the separation and and then there's the separation into the next um, in, in, into the 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 the, the baby ward, or um, I'm not sure what they call it. Uh, and for for me, there was I, I was with my birth mother for a while, and then and I, I don't know how long, maybe a, maybe a few days. Then I went into short term foster care for probably about four weeks or so and then she had to collect me from there and take me to the uh, agents to the agency to the council the adoption council and that's where my mum and dad met me and took me home 70 80 miles I guess something home. so does that physical separation the physical separation from the, of the cutting the umbilical cord, separation into the room, separation into a in, into a, um, a a foster foster care, the separation one, the separation, the final separation with the uh, with the adoptive parents, and uh, and then there's the em, e, e, emotional spiritual separation when we feel maybe we feel disconnected 
to our that we feel disconnected from our our birth mum. We don't feel connected to our adoptive parents, and therefore the sense of lost connection grows, and it grows, and it becomes a uh, it becomes a chasm. This separation with our from our, our birth mum. So that's one sort of, and then we spend our life looking to for for a reconnection, or we, or we don't. You know, um, I I didn't think about reconnecting with my birth mother for the first forty years of my life. So, so this, we're we're seeking, we are seeking connection to our birth mother, maybe to our birth father as well, maybe to our birth family, our biological family. Uh, and it, it's growing, the, the, the chasm, the, the, the degree of separation is going and, and growing. And that describes the, that describes the, defines the, the need for connection. But we're, we're also, that's on one level is this connection, but what about our connection to ourselves? So what what do I mean by our selves? Well, our true selves are our true essence. Um, we are we we feel uh, I, th I think our, our, our trauma represents a barrier between who we are and who we perceive ourselves to be. So people talk about the separate self or the ego. And that is, we don't come into this world with one of those. That's built up over layers and of years and layers of, uh, of conditioning. And maybe our disconnection with our, our disconnection from our, uh, our birth parents, our disconnection from our birth mother, that all feeds into this sense of self being being separate. Um, now, non adopted people have that. Non adopted people have separate selves too. Uh, a, a lot of my, my my work over the last my 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 doing the work my my work my own personal work over the last fourteen years now has been done mainly with non adopted people and they feel very separate from themselves too they uh, feel that gap between who they are and who they think themselves to be the uh, the ego i think as adoptees our sense of separation is turbocharged right so it's it's ex it's accelerated it's it's widened it, it it's widened it's much more sticky so that's why our life feels like we're walking through treacle right we feel we we feel that we are separate from our birth mother, separate from ourselves, and maybe we don't see that separation from ourselves. Maybe we put we project all the separation onto our separation from our uh, from our birth mothers, right? And and that's why we think that once that is found, once we found, once we're in the a, a reunion, and once the reunions were going well then uh, then that separate self will be dissolved forever. And clearly that doesn't always happen. That How often does that happen? I, I talked about people that have been in, talked to lots of people that have been in reunion and they talk about it. Uh, it, it, it that's an emotional roller coaster. Uh, as well uh, and yet 
some of them talk about how that 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 sense of connection means it's is their safety net it, it's their emotional safety net so they can be riding the emotional roller coaster and yet they feel safe they feel that they're safely strapped in on the emotional roller coaster they can ride the highs and lows of their uh, emotions because they've discovered who they truly are so sometimes it works out like that sometimes it doesn't every as i think perhaps every adoption is unique every reunion is is uh, unique as well so the other side the other thing that often happens when people do the search is that as they found that their birth they found that their birth mother has died and that that's what was, that's what happened to me so i found that information out probably 2017 2015 something like that i can't remember exactly the year but she uh that my birth mother had died in 2002 and so people people say wow that must have been really horrible for you simon that you that must have been horrible uh disappointing question your dreams whatever they say this uh, and i say well yeah it was um it, it it was a, a, a disappointment, but it, it, it wasn't a tragedy for me somehow. It wasn't a tragedy. So why wasn't it a tragedy? What was it? If I'd been searching searching for, 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 for connection, I I I think that the connection that I was seeking seeking my birth, birth mother actually happened. And this is where we get a little bit woo-woo, right? So as I read the adoption file, as I read the letter from Pat to the social worker about the teddy bear, and I felt I, I felt a connection with her despite the fact that she died. 12, 15 years before um, before I read that letter. I felt as one with her. I felt a sense of love with her. I, 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 I fell in love with her, like love was a big, warm space. So I, the metaphor that I came up with this for this was... Around Christmas time, I sometimes go to a different swimming pool because mine is closed. And this swimming pool is a 50 meter pool, so six, maybe 60 yard pool. And it, 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 uh, it can, there is a, 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 a wall that rises from the base, from the, the what do they call it? The bottom of the, uh, the bottom of the swimming pool, the floor of the swimming pool. It, it rises up to cut this, uh, to, to separate one big pool into two little pools so i felt that pat was in one pool or pat was one pool and i was the other pool and as i read that letter the um the the, the wall in the swimming pool collapsed so it dropped to the dropped to the floor of the the the, the, the floor of the swimming pool and what was two became one. So connection involves two people, involves two things. So it involves two things. It involves me and my birth mum, you and your birth mum, you and your adopted parent, me and my adopted parents. It, 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 it takes two to tango, and it's two. It takes two for there to be a connection. Uh, but this wasn't. This wasn't. T the the swimming pool. Was one. It was a merger of two. Two became one. It's a price thing. <laughs> so. I think I've come up with that before. It's a Spice Girl song, songs, when two become one. So this was a merging of two entities. 
into one. This wasn't this this wasn't um, a a handshake between two people, a connection, a physical connection, um, or the umbilical cord connection. Yeah, the 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 cutting of the umbilical cord divides one into two. That's the opposite way around. This was a re. This was a a a, 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 a spiritual, a psychological, an emotional re. re reconnecting i guess in the first place so that we became one some listeners may be figuring i'm contradicting myself here and i may be doing that it's maybe it's both maybe it's one of those paradoxes when both are true so what was the gap what, what I've explained how I've, I've explained that two became one, but what was the uh, the, the in, in the metaphor? What does the the wall that separated the two swimming pools? What does that? What what does the wall represent, or what is the wall in in the world? So the wall is a metaphor. What it what is it a metaphor for? I would say it's a metaphor for felt separation, perceived separation that wasn't true. So the truth sets us free, and in the truth, we are all one. And I felt that sense of oneness in with my birth mother I, I talked about this before i felt that i felt that sense of one in concerts the killers i mentioned earlier on i felt that sense of one in in um rugby stadiums where the let's let's call it my imagined separation dissolves and the whole world becomes one. We are one spiritual being having five million adoptees experience. We are one spiritual being having seven billion, eight billion, whatever it is, separate human experiences. So connection is the absence of separation. Connection is the perceived, sorry, connection is seeing the oneness of us all, recognizing that we are all one being. It is one universe, although we feel separate and we've been conditioned to we've been conditioned to feel separation but at the end of the day we were we are all one and in my heart to your heart i feel that that is what we're looking for we're looking for the we're looking for the oneness Connection is based on two-ness, and we're looking for oneness. Thank you very much. I hope that helps. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.